Yo, 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 this is Jay Liggs and this is the Culture Cure Podcast. I'm back at you today. This is Wednesday. Uh, I got a couple special guests in the building. We're going to be talking about a few things. Entrepreneurship, growth, uh, changes in the in the culture and within the city. Um, so I'm just going to get cracking with it. My special guest today is my friend and uh, homie, Jessica Chris Crittenden. How you doing? I'm well. Okay, all Pleasure right. Pleasure to be here to this evening. I appreciate it, appreciate it. So um, brought her in today because she's um, one of the movers and shakers in the city that are doing some big things. She's an entrepreneur, and uh, we want to just have some entrepreneur talk today. So I'm um, going to give Jessica the floor. I just wanna, want you to kind of tell your story a little bit. Well, as he stated, I'm Jessica. I'm actually the owner of a, an event company, decorating company called Visions Be Held. Okay. Um, Visions Be Held, what I, I do and my team do, we coordinate events, uh, weddings, baby showers, corporate events, you name it. We do it. Um, we provide linen. We rent linen out. So if you don't need us to do a full service for you, you can rent things from us, such as your centerpieces. You can rent your um, linen from us. You can, Or you can hire us for your full service. Um, Visions Be Hell was established about seven years ago. Wow. Yeah, that's where we did our first event, which was a baby shower. Okay. And um, I was inspired to start the event planning with, because I've always take the lead, whether it was like in elementary school or whether it was at work, at my first job, second job. I was always the one to say, oh, I can do it or it should go this way. I was just always an organized person. So I took that yeah, organized. Like yeah. <laughs> so I decided to take those boss skills okay. and become my own boss. Okay. Um, so far it's paying off for me and I love it. Okay. So within the city, like what? What made you choose, uh, okay, so you said event planning. A lot of people you kept coming to you to do things, so you decided. But why did you decide that particular route? Because you could have been just a coordinator. You could have been just uh, a vendor, you know. So why the whole en encompasses of the whole, the, the whole business? Because there's always a need. There is always someone who doesn't like to be um, on the scene as, putting it all together. They like to throw it off on someone else. And they find it as a lot of pressure. To me, I find it fun. So okay. the pressure of putting it together and thinking of the creativity of how all this is to put together and bring it to life. That's why it's visions be hell. I bring your vision together. Okay. To me, that's fun. A lot of people say, no, I would rather not. Or, you know, I want to see this, but I can't do it. Mm -hmm. So that's when I say, well, I can. Okay. So, and the need around the city now, like, you see all these major events, like the baby showers are very elaborate yeah, now. They're, they're doing reveal parties. Yes, tonight. reveals. All of that is just, uh, like, super elaborate. So, it's like, why not? So, so with you being with the, with your company working to the, within that realm, how has that been for you? How is it, how has it, has it been crazy to see that prom send-offs now are more, elaborate than graduation parties like oh absolutely <laughs> what, like the what is the this, most craziest this thing? past prom season i this is it was actually great for me i'm sure it was. but it was like what am i what do i have to look forward to for my children because i'm like yeah, i don't yeah, want to yeah. have to do all this foolishness yeah but i've seen some things on it Instagram was like somebody had like a maserati and, and rose royces and they yes. didn't even drive them. It was no just the right these were just oh i want this car here because my child need uh, whatever you want i'm gonna do it like okay i had one where they wanted a whole boat service. Uh -huh. So I want my child to leave from here, get on a yacht, and pull up at their prom in a boat. So this is something that I have to coordinate for them. If that's what you want, that's what I'm going to do. How much but does it cost to pull up in a boat? Like, what is that? Um, it yeah. depends on the owner of the boat. Like, this particular person wanted, like, three, $400. Oh, okay. I mean, right. that's And it's only because it's, like, an hour or so. But if it's going to take you a whole night, you're going to be looking a couple thousand. But... But they were only going to prom. So how do you even look into finding someone's boat to rent for that? It's all about in the business. So before you go into a business like this, you have to have connections because the person okay. that comes to you, they're going to want to know venues. So you're going to have to have a venue for them. You're going to have to meet a person that does this or does this. So you're going to there's a lot of connections that has to be made in this industry. So okay. that's how. So, you know, there's not any it, 
anytime a client comes to me, I should never say, I don't know how that's going to happen. There should, mm. I should never, ever, ever say, I don't know. In the back of my mind, I should already be figuring out, like, yeah, I can make that happen. Okay. Instantly get off the phone, get on the phone, and start making it happen. Okay. All right, cool. So, um, how was it for you, like, when you when you were starting a business? What, like, give someone that's looking into starting a business a few tips. Like, what, what did you have to do? To start your business. What Listen, it's it? always tough. Like even right, I'm still considered a new entrepreneur. Oh, of course, yes, yeah. because it's like you and my business. You find what we call people with caviar dreams and beer budgets. <laughs> so you'll have someone who comes and they oh find something they saw on a Pinterest page or they see on Instagram. I want this to happen. That's seven eight thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and they have seven eight hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. So okay. it's hard to, eat, and, but then you don't want to miss out on the client because you want right. to get your name out there. So you find yourself stretching yourself thin and trying to produce this vision for them okay. just so you don't lose the client. So okay. the in the beginning with starting anything, it's kind of like hard to not turn down business, mm-hmm. but it's hard to, you're going to be working extremely hard. So in the mm-hmm. beginning, I worked hard basically doing things for free. Okay. Okay. And that's so pretty much not paying yourself. So just basically giving them a budget or telling them what it's going to cost uh, for what they want, and then you yeah. just not paying yeah, yourself. I'm not paying myself at all. Yeah, I'm they correct. say when you're when you're starting anything, you're going to spend more money um, starting out than you are going to make before. It. Mm-hmm. And it's an investment. You know, it's an investment in yourself. It's a, it it's takes a, money to make money. In, indeed, it does. So how has it been? You know, developing this business within the city of Detroit. In the city of Detroit, has it been a struggle? Do you find that you had more benefits? Because uh, you're a hometown girl, right? I am definitely from Detroit, born and raised. Okay. Um, Detroit Public Schools. Okay. Um, everything. I've, uh, everything was Detroit okay. for me. So I'm definitely a Detroit girl. Okay. So um, I live in Detroit. Okay. So everything is Detroit for me. I'm If I had it any other way, I don't think I would leave Detroit. So, okay. you know, when people say, oh, Detroit this, when I go out of town and they talk so bad on Detroit, I just, it burns my soul up because there's so much good things that are happening in the city of Detroit. There's okay. So, um, back to your question. <laughs> the question was, what, how was it, you know, getting started within the city? Did, was there a lot of avenues that were available well, for you? Well, it is it hard getting started in Detroit because you, when you are in a market like this, you can you may can speak with this or you speak for this. There's a popularity thing. Uh, yeah. So if you're not like the person on Instagram or on Facebook or out in the actual world and you're not the popular person, it doesn't matter what you had to offer. They're going to overlook you and book with this other person mm. or do this because that's the popular person. When I can offer you, that person's going to charge you or, you know what I'm saying, I'm not stepping on anyone's toes or anything if that's what you want to do, but mm. still give me a chance. Correct. Because we can produce the same thing if that person's not available that day. We And even the person that you may want to go book with, we may could be working together. Because mm-hmm. there's been times I've collaborated with some of the other people in the same industry as me to help me or mm-hmm. to even provide some of the services that I may have not have been. So I don't mind collaborating with some of the other people. And, mm-hmm. you know, some of them, because they know I'm very humble and they don't mind collaborating and giving me advice as well. Right. So that's the challenge in, in Detroit is just, the whole popularity thing. So what have been some ways that you have uh, come to combat that? Is letting them know, you know, basically, oh, okay, I know such and such. You know, we're really good friends. We've worked together on several occasions. You know, go ahead and check with them and see what they had to offer you. If they're not available, feel free to come back. Mm -hmm. You know, or either I may call them and say, oh, well, such and such is coming your way. And that person may even say, oh, well, we can work together on this. So it never works against me. Mm -hmm. I don't get mad and say, oh, well, forget it then go to that person i just say okay well what is it that they're offering you that i may can mm-hmm. so it's like a car dealership why would you want to go across the street what is it that over there that it is that i may can offer you okay so well i'm making figure give out yeah where you can fill yeah. in the gap exactly okay so um so some of the programs like ha- have you heard of like opportunity Detroit and things of that nature mm-hmm. okay so like with the, you said seven years you've been Seven years? You've yeah. Been in business? Okay, so like the first couple of years, what are some of the things that you did to, I guess, um, not just to, to, well, yeah, let's ask that question. What, what have you done to really market yourself? Like, 
uh, outside of social media? What are some unique ways that you've developed to market yourself? I will go to a lot of the like halls mm -hmm. and things like that, try to build relationships and contracts with them. Um, anytime, like a wedding, uh, what do you call those? The, the conferences or whatever? Yeah, those okay. sort of things. Yeah. I make sure I'm there. Okay. Um, anytime, like sometimes I drop the ball when I'm like explaining to people mm -hmm. about my business. And they're like, oh, where's your car? I dropped the ball because I do not have yeah. it, and it just burns up my soul. Yeah, people, anybody um, trying to be have, a, have it that's an entrepreneur with a business, always Always have a cars. car. Always yes, cars, I have yeah. a box of them that I had in my trunk, and I'm like, why don't I have a car? Like, mm -hmm. what the heck is going on? Um, I buy things like this, okay. and people are like, what's that? Asking? yeah, okay. what am I asking you? Like, what's your business? And I say, oh, well, I'm glad you asked. And right. then I'll go into it, and I explain to them about my business. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I have T-shirts. I have different ways of trying to market and get out. You know, I do different little uh, promos. So if I have a friend who's having a birthday, I'll have a birthday, a nice birthday dinner for them. And I'll mm -hmm. decorate, and then they'll invite all their friends. And it's just a word of mouth type thing sometimes. So over the years, kind of switch gears a little bit, what are the pros and cons that you've come across uh, being, an entrepreneur, being a business owner? So let's start with the pros. Pros are you get to do something that you actually love. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you or anyone else work a nine to five, you know, okay, this is a, that's a job. Yeah. So this mm -hmm. is something that I have to do because it's paying the bills and currently I'm in between both. So okay. working a job and then actually clocking out to do something that you love, mm -hmm. that's, that's a pro. Okay. So it doesn't matter how hard, like. This past weekend, I had two events. Mm -hmm. So I had a wedding and a birthday party back to back. Mm -hmm. Weddings are huge. It takes up a whole weekend. Got home, dog tired. <laughs> but it's not the same type of tired as me getting off from my 9 to 5 and be like, right. why am I tired? Why am I mentally drained from something that I don't even own this place? It was a sense of the, uh, Yes. It was like success. I'm tired because it was my work that mm -hmm. I put in. It was something that I enjoyed doing. Mm -hmm. So I didn't mind putting in the sweat and all that because it was something that I produced mm -hmm. and I was able to look back and say, Jessica, you did that. Mm -hmm. And both events. So that's definitely a pro of it, just doing something you love. Okay. The cons of it is everything takes time. So um, it's not, you get into it, a lot of people quit. Because, yeah. oh, okay, I'm thinking I'm supposed to make this amount of money or I'm supposed to be doing this and this and that amount of time. That's just definitely not how it happened. Like I said, seven years, and I'm still not where I want to be. Mm -hmm. So I would give it another seven years, and hopefully by then you will be. But you can talk to any entrepreneur, and they would definitely tell you unless it was someone's favor mm -hmm. that got them and they instantly was in the game and they took off. It takes time, it takes patience, and oh, it yeah. definitely takes dedication. Yeah, so. no one ever clicks overnight. I was, um, I read a Kevin Hart's book. Did you read that? Uh, no. Okay. So yeah, the passage in the book where he was talking about how everybody, when he started, when he was hitting the movie scene, I think his first was Think Like a Man. I think that was like the, the biggest movie that he had, the first one. Mm -hmm. But we fail to remember that he was in Paper Soldiers, he was in Soul Plane, and actually he had got to a point where he was producing a movie, uh, a TV pilot, and it just never got picked up. So all of this stuff, it was, I think he was saying it was like 10 years of, you know, just, you know, hitting the, the comedy circuit with the comedy um, lounges and things of that nature. Uh, and then he had a couple opportunities with the movies. And I think so even though Soul Plane didn't do good in the box office because it was bootleg so much, right? a lot of people knew who he was. So he had a, not a lot of notoriety from it. So then when it came full circle and he actually got that opportunity to be in that next movie, it was like he was a new guy, but he really wasn't. So I get what you're saying. Like when, when, when you're in situations where, cause it only takes one year, you know, you can, you, you can get turned down or you can have failure or just, you know, this, the small successes, successes after small successes. Um, it only takes that one major yes that, you know, sends you, you off. just be like, bam, mm -hmm. I'm in there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, what are some things that you plan to do to, I guess, um, to take take yourself to the next step? I want to get off into corporate events. 
So, okay. um, you know how may like Ford, GM, or some of these major like black tie galas and mm-hmm. things like that. I want to be the one behind the scenes producing that. Okay. So, um, theirs may not be like on a major scale of some of these baby showers and things like that, but <laughs> it's still something that I would want to do. You mm-hmm. know, I want to be able to have that connection where they call, oh, Jessica, we're having a brunch or mm-hmm. we're having a lunch and for this many people that's coming into town and they mm-hmm. call me and put that together. Okay. So, that's my next level. That's where I want to go. What steps are you taking to do that? Right now, I'm just like, anybody that's having anything, I'm like, there. So, if mm-hmm. anyone's saying, oh, well, my job is having like this mix and mingle, I'm there. So, I'm there. With I'm cards, right? Absol- absolutely. <laughs> I'm there with cards. I'm introducing myself. I'm saying, oh, okay, well, when's your ne- you should try me out for this. Or, you know, if you keep me in mind for this, if you want to give your employees. Like, I was um talking to someone with H&R Block, mm-hmm. and at the end of the year, Sometimes they give all their tax preparers like a large party. I was like, okay, well, cool. You know, make sure you keep me in mind because if we do this and in exchange for this, I'll be the one there to, you know, give your employees this big, large end of the year party. They was like, oh, cool. I didn't even know you did that. So, mm-hmm. you know, hopefully that lands me in the corporate with contract with H and R Block. So, okay. you know, just word of mouth and making sure that I intervene at the right time whenever someone. <laughs> okay, perfect. So, um back to like the city and how how has being how has being a hometown girl helped you in your business with knowledge so um being a hometown when people are not so familiar with detroit and they're like thinking that there's not any value to it Mm -hmm. i'm able to point them into different areas of detroit and like oh wow i didn't even know that existed what are some places that you've come across that you didn't know existed like in your in your travels, because I'm sure like when you're searching for venues and things of that nature, you'll be around and you'll probably go down a different street. Like, wait, I didn't know this was here. Yeah, there are so many like lofts now. Like mm-hmm. you know, you can look at the outside of the building. You're like, I'm not going in there. Mm-hmm. But if you go in the inside of these places, mm-hmm. they're excellent venues mm-hmm. for whatever type of event that you want. Okay. So there's a lot of hidden jewels in Detroit. And of course you should call me for more information. <laughs> a little, little, little slight plug there. Exactly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. So, um, so you said, so one of the benefits of being a hometown girl is that you have more knowledge than other people. Okay. So, right. um, what, any other benefits? I wouldn't say of being a hometown girl, there's more of a love for it. Mm-hmm. So I would be more passionate about doing something in my city because mm. I'm from here. Mm. So there's a passion okay. there. Okay. So um, if if someone was to reach out to you and ask you to come to another city or another state to produce something, would you do that? Absolutely. I'm not going to turn it down. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. You know? I'm not like, oh, I don't think there's nothing wrong with someone saying, yeah, I'm going to go here. It's, it's my job. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm only doing what, you know, I'm, I'm destined to do. Okay. But a- am I going to be more of a diehard passionate because I'm doing it in my city? Probably so. Okay. Okay. I feel like I'm giving back at some point. Okay. I can see that. I, I, I like that. So um, what is one of the, um, what was your favorite event that you put on? Like, like where you, you learned some things about yourself. When I did, um, I, there was a wedding where I did from beginning to the end. So I actually coordinated it and I decorated it. Mm, so you had to deal with the bridezilla. I did. I had <laughs> to deal with the bride, bridesmaid. It doesn't, and then most time it's not even the brides. It's the bride's mothers that mm. are the zillas. Okay. So when you sit back and you just say, okay, at the end, everyone was happy because they at, mm-hmm. at first they didn't trust you. So okay. they're calling you every two seconds, like, um, "I need this, this, and that," or "Did you get my picture?" Did you, I, I, I got you. Like, mm-hmm. I, just trust me. You know, this right. is your vision. I'm gonna be hold it. So that's. <laughs> I, I see you with your little plug. I got you. <laughs> that is. Th- this is just what I'm gonna do. So <laughs> at the end, when I've actually coordinated your wedding, mm-hmm. everyone got down the aisle the way you wanted to, whether they were jitting or whatever they were doing. Somebody jitted down the aisle. <laughs> You Listen, that? if that's what you want, that's what I'm Somebody, gonna let them. I'll YouTube it. Uh-huh. I'm gonna figure it out, okay. and we're gonna get down the aisle. Yeah, that was a and then wedding. get to the. 
they get it down to us. <laughs> exactly. You get down to your reception, and your cake is where you need it to be, and everyone is, your place settings, and mm-hmm. everything's in, and you look back at me, and you say, thank you. It was worth all those midnight phone calls, and that's when I'm just like, okay, I'm proud at this point. So in the course of these seven years, what have you learned about yourself, be, like, opening up your own business? I've learned that I am extremely patient. <laughs> I've learned that I can adapt to anyone's attitude. Okay. So... Um, I've had a few people, you know, I have a few people that work with me Mm -hmm. and I know the ones that cannot be on the forefront with the actual customers because some may have bad attitudes and then their attitude will quickly change to adjust to the customer. Mm -hmm. No, that cannot happen. Mine, I will remain neutral with you. Mm -hmm. I'll go home possibly. I'll go home possibly and I will press maybe, (laughs) but... Let a little, let a little steam off. Yeah, mm, but come back to, to you, it. I'm like, oh, that's okay, that's fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh huh. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, whatever you want, but I never lose my cool. Okay. And I did get that compliment a few times from customers, like at weddings, like, you know, I I noticed how you just handled that so well, and and that's with anything at work. I'm just I, I I handle things very well. Like I don't, nothing really gets me too upset to where I'm just like, angry. Okay. Um. So, change gears a little bit. How has, uh, with the growth of social media, how has it helped and or hurt your business? Um, the growth of so it, it helps because of the hashtag. Mm-hmm. So, a lot of times when I post something, I hashtag it, and I figure out now that when people post, I mean, when they touch on the hashtag, it brings them to what they're looking for. Mm-hmm. And I'll get a lot of in- inquiries that way. Okay. Um, but then again... It can harm because there's always the competitors that are, like, way more popular than me right now. And they come up under that hashtag also. Yeah, and it's like, oh, okay, it's either her or her. Mm -hmm. I know everybody goes with her, so I might as well go with her. Okay. So it's okay. Eventually I'll be one of those, I'm going to go with her. And what are your plans to become her, as you say? Gets me a couple of those gigs that allows me, like, right now, I don't think that, um, my talent, like I have Instagram pages and things, but a lot of the things that I'm capable of doing are not displayed on there. Okay. Um, one, because I haven't got the client that has actually, I, w- I wouldn't say trusted me or have given me the challenge to do what I'm capable of doing. Oh, okay. okay. So, um, well, my skills enough. are like impeccable. I can do things that are just like in my head. And I, w- was, I really want to do these things, mm-hmm. but I can't continue to do them off my budget. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't do these things at people's events that have hired me. And, of mm-hmm. course, I'll put extra in or I'll put a twist in it. Mm-hmm. And just because they've only paid me for a certain amount. But I'm like, it needs more. Because mm-hmm. if I post it or I put my name on it, I have to put more to it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I have to get an opportunity to do something grand. So just... So basically what you were saying, back to that statement about it takes money to make money. Sometimes you have to put in a little extra into the situation. Not a little. Oh, a lot of extra? Yeah. A whole lot of extra? Yeah. Almost free again, huh? Almost, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, like you said, growing pains. But basically, then you you one day get that that event that has that abu- that budget that's unlimited. It's like, well, this is what we what want. I, and I'll just listen. And then you just, you'll create magic, huh? And I will. Well, that's cool. Okay. So, um... Let's do a five-year plan. Where do you see yourself? See the business in five in five years? I'm gonna be have that one customer is gonna say, "Do your thing." Okay. And you're gonna see that, and you're gonna be like, "Look at that! That's just because she said she's gonna (laughs) do that at Vision and Hill. She did that." And then I'm gonna just get all these millions and millions of likes, and I'm gonna have all these clients, and Mm. then I'm gonna be back, and it may not be me; it may be someone else. Oh, 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 excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't make it today, mm. but I'll send such and My such. My assistant. A, yes. Oh, okay. And she can definitely do just as good of a job that oh, I can. okay. But I didn't want to send you up because you gave me the opportunity. S- assistant in five years. Yes. Huh? Okay. This is in five years. Okay. I'll say two. Oh, assistant in two. Yes. All right. Yeah. Anybody looking for a job in two years? Visions Be Held is hiring. Visions Be Held will be there. Okay. All right. So that's what's going to happen in my next five-year plan. Um, Storefronts. 
It's how did that, actually how did that work out? because I told you I, I ran out late. Oh, okay. So I okay, ha- cool. <clears throat> I have a whole inventory of merchandise that goes from center pieces to uh, silverware, napkins, linen. I have all that stuff already mm-hmm. in my inventory. So let's let's pause there for a minute. So how so would that would that be home base for the for the business and I guess a proportion of it's working a, propor- a portion of the of your profits from each event will go to service the brick and mortar because technically if you're not if it's just rental you're not really selling anything so how does that become profitable for to to basically sustain a brick and mortar um because it's constantly coming back so if you come to me so, and you so, rent a so table not cloth, even just not it's eight dollars you're gonna bring me that back Oh, okay. So and basically, then the next person's gonna come and they're gonna do the mm, same thing and okay, they're gonna do so the same thing. Okay. So I was looking at it more so from the fact that they will come and do everything with you. So you're just talking about just for rental. So brick and mortar just for rental. Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Yeah. So um, you know, I, of course, I would use my storefront as a consultation place. So you can okay. come to me. We can you know talk about your party layout. We can do all that stuff. I can also show you at this point. You can see, I can put together your table here. Mm-hmm. I can put together your party almost. Um, everything inside of my facility. I've been working on that. So hopefully I think uh, next year, 2019. Okay. Uh, found the location. And hopefully next year I'll have all that. So you In just, Detroit? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not leaving outside of Detroit. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. It will be in Detroit, so you'll be able to come. There's, like, a couple other businesses like it, but um, you'll just be able to come because you will say, oh, I'm having an event. I need 10 black tablecloths, Mm -hmm. and you will come to me with those 10 black tablecloths, throne chairs, those sort of things. Yeah, so (laughs) what, what's, what, what, where can I, okay, since you do events, where did this elaborate baby shower and uh, just not to double back on like the the prom send off and where did it come from? Like it, it became. I can't even tell you, but I am definitely thankful for it. <laughs> um, I don't know where it started. Yeah. I, 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 of course, it definitely started in the celebrity world. You think? So, so we only mimic. Well, celebrities what we not see. sending off their kids. Like they may send off. They, they may do. I, I've seen celebrity sweet sixteens, but I've never seen like celebrity prom send off. What do you think? It came? And celebrity yes, that's baby where it shower. Comes from. Well, yes. I've seen a couple of celebrity baby showers, but okay. To the to the aspect of where I saw something on social media, where the girl was, she was delivered to her prom and had her, I guess, family members dress up like they were FedEx. They rented a U-Haul van. <laughs> she was de- like they delivered her as a package. They brought her out in this life size Barbie doll box that they built. They rolled the box out to the door, opened it up, and she came out. <laughs> like, I know like, it was just like, why, was, why, why is all this necessary? And I promise you, and the day I decide to have children and my child better not ever, and I'm gonna give them a look just like this. I'm, excuse me. Oh, no. And they're yeah. going to turn around and they're going to go back to the room and say, I, I tried it. No. Don't come to me with that foolishness. No, nah, they're going to want to teleport by that time. Mommy, I need a teleportation device so I can just pop in. Oh, and pop yeah, up. okay. Yeah. And you you better ask your friends. No, Maybe they mama no, doing no, it. No, vision this mama. Going to have to, going to have to, going to, you got to put, put those together. I'm already sick. <laughs> I probably won't even have a baby shower or wedding. I probably won't even oh, have. Oh, you're tired of doing it. I just, I'm not gonna. I'm not tired of doing it. I just, we're not tired of doing it. You do it for so many other people. You're not going to do it. It's for just like so much. Or else I'm. I, 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 if I do, someone else is definitely gonna do it. I'm not doing it myself. So you'll hire somebody else. To yeah. Do it. Huh, gotcha. Pay it forward. Yeah. See. Look at that. Yeah. Look at y'all. I definitely. I definitely believe in that. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> All right so, um, ten years. 10 years, I will be having all of that along with having others who inspire to do the same thing. So maybe have a training clinic or oh, wow. some type of That's different. school or like having like a certification school where I can certify other event people who want to be event planners. So would that be you're certified through Visions Be Held or would you just be certified? Is, it, is there a certification for that? Absolutely. Oh, okay. I'm certified. I I didn't know. I, wh- where's the cert- who's the certification through? You can get certifications through like 
um universities and things. You get certified hmm. to being a certified event coordinator, a certified. I event did not planner. know that was a certification. Yeah. That's crazy. Like you had to pay for that and everything. Absolutely, it's like a college tuition. You pay for that. How much does that cost? Um, it's like I think it was like a couple thousand. A couple thousand. Yeah. What What school did you go to to get it? Ashford. Okay. Wow. Learned something today. I did not know that. For yeah. real. Ashford has it. Okay. All right. So, so I guess would you be like a a spinoff or like um? I have to do more research to where I can figure out how they would be, how I would be able to be licensed to certify to get other their people. Accreditation. Yeah, to accreditate people. Okay. Probably would be something like being a, a satellite campus or something for right. another, for another location. But I would love to do that, or at least host training. You know, to mm-hmm. be able to train those who inspire to do something like me. Well, I think that would probably be an easier uh, thing to start because, like you said, it's a training. You know, right. I am just going to basically give you the knowledge I have from the experience I have, um, help you not um, make the mistakes that I made. You know, and uh, show you some of the things that I've accomplished and. Maybe give you some tips. So I, right. I think that would be something. Because the game is to be sold, not. I mean, the game is to be sold, not told. So you, oh, so you're gonna sell it? Okay, all right. <laughs> Make them for free. Absolutely. <laughs> so no, so so you gonna try it for? Oh, you're not now. gonna just show up and just be like, oh, well, you here, fir- give me all that. You can't get the first session free and then like. I come mean, I'm gonna work out some. I'm not gonna oh, just okay. charge you thousands. No, 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 I wouldn't yeah, do I'm that. I'm not gonna work. I'm just saying, I mean, you just can't. Oh, Jessica's giving out free information right now, like. Yeah. No? All right. I, I wouldn't even give you right now. I wouldn't even tell you the hidden jewels. So what makes you think that? Did I ask about the hidden jewels? You were th- you were headed there. And I was like, um, oh, for more hid- info, call me. Oh, the hidden jewel of the city. Yeah. Are you going to tell me off the air? No? I still got to call you? What if I don't even want the hidden jewel? I don't know where I might want to go and just No, because like, you might in I your wanna, mind I have like, somebody that's, you know, no, you would send them to me. I would. I might want to just go. I don't care. No, yeah, I no. might just want to go and, and, and all at this. You know, hidden jewel in the Google. city. You didn't even tell me what it was. Google. So just Google hidden jewels in Absolutely. Detroit. Absolutely. I doubt that comes up. Yeah. The, okay. That's the, how I did it. Yeah, sure you did. <clears throat> All right. So, um, what? Um, I think I asked you, but I, I think we kind of blew past. But what are some tips? Like I said, you can give to someone that wants to get into your particular. Because I think I asked about entrepreneurship. So what are some tips that you can give to someone to get into your uh, line of business? Um, I would just tell them to first start off with volunteering for someone who you, close to you who you know that's having an event. So mm-hmm. if you have this creative idea in your mind, um, volunteer to do that baby shower. Volunteer to do that surprise grandma's 70th birthday party. Mm-hmm. Like that's how I really started. Oh, I'll get the, I'll get the centerpieces or I'll do it. Grandpa's turning 80, let me do it. And that's really how it went from there. And everyone's like, Jessica did this? Oh, she should do this and that. And I'm like, good idea. And it took off from there. Okay. All right, so would that, okay, so would, if, I guess you would consider that an intern, would you be looking to accept interns? Like Absolutely, I need them all the time. Like, okay. yeah. Okay, well, let's just, I guess it's a, no opportunity better than now to, how would someone get in contact with you if they wanted to reach out and intern. Please go to and like my Instagram. It's Visions Be Hell. Exactly how it sounds. B I S I O N S B E H E L D. Okay. Yeah. Visions Be Held. All right. And um, you can Google it. The business is licensed. Everything. So. Okay. okay. So oh yeah. So let's stop there. So for some people, because this is um. Uh, my first uh, show on entrepreneurship, so I do want to drop some different jewels for people. When you uh, let's talk about that, how did you go about getting licensed and all that? Was that a process? Was it hard? That's also something else I offer. If you, um, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> licensing. Um, there's like licensing? all these. Um, yes. Okay, I, that's something. Totally all these different. different sites online that'll charge you four or five hundred dollars to. It's so simple. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like something that I offer almost for nothing like if you go to my page find me i will definitely walk you through it and help you to get your business license help you get your llc help you get your tax id number and i will not charge you for five hundred thousand dollars to do that so and you can get it same day oh excuse yes. me same it does day not you don't have to mail off all the stuff that um oh, 
it's some other company. I'm not going to drop any names. But there's companies online that charge people four or $500 for this service that me as a Detroit resident, okay. native, would love to help other entrepreneurs do. I can educate you on what these different things mean. Even if you are getting into nonprofit, there's like a form nonprofit that they try to make it hard for you to fill out. It's not that hard to fill out. Okay. Call me for questions. I do not charge that much. Resume. I'll look at that for you. Oh, okay, so <laughs> <laughs> I think that's another part of business. I don't think business. there's anything you that do they it, don't do. You, Just give me a call. You're doing everything, taxes, huh? All of that, yes. Uh, okay. Oh, taxes, yes. resumes. Okay, so we got taxes, we got resumes, we got business, startup. Startup kits. We do. <laughs> 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 business, startup kits. We got uh, event planning. It's going to be a school later. We got a lot, yes, of, got, we got we a lot of hats. Look for me. You wear a lot of hats. <laughs> So you said it's bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> All day long I wear these hats and at the end of the day I just go home to my puppy and I'm like, Good night. And he'd be uh, like he'd be like, Get up off me because you, you you crowded my space. No, he does not. He'd be happy to see his <laughs> mommy. So um you went, okay, you did say something about business license and LLC. So those are two different things? Um, well, it's not different things. You have to get them and you Flipping knowledge, but you have to get them. You gotta, you gotta pull people in. You gotta pull people in. So I'm giving you the opportunity. <laughs> They're to not pull people too in. well. Yeah, LLC and a business like you, there you have to obtain obtain it. So whether you, it depends on the entity of your business. So See? most times, if you're starting off a small business such as myself, you want to start off as an LLC mm-hmm. where you become the sole proprietor, or you have more. Um, and then it goes on from there. You got okay. a corporation, okay. so LLC corporations, uh, sole proprietorships, it goes from there. Okay. See, see, that's the pool. But I, I say, Dem, can you get a business degree? I, I'm interviewing you. <laughs> I'm not interviewing myself. <laughs> you're the one here. You know, you're the you're the guest that's supposed to be giving the business knowledge. I could I could have said it that the, me talking to myself for 30 minutes is not oh, okay. much entertaining. So for me to ask you, someone that has a business, I mean. Regardless of what I do, it has okay. nothing to do just with... Just making sure. Yeah, I'm just ask you a question. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right, cool. Um, made me lose my train of thought here. So, um, okay, so um, within the city, um, what are some things like... Remember when uh, we had that that tax incentive for, like, the movie theaters? Or, like, movie theaters, but the movies and a lot of movies was coming to the city of Detroit. Mm-hmm. Has anything changed within, like, when you were um, in the last seven years of your, your business? Has anything changed within the city that has affected you negatively, like, on, I guess, a political scale? I don't know. Actually, no. I feel like the way that the city is developing now is helping okay. because more things are coming to the city. You have more um, patrons, so there's more people mm, yeah. in the city, yeah, a lot more people in the city. Um, that are wanting to do things in the city, so you're not... Like, as far as traveling, I don't have to travel as far to events to do things for people. It's, like, metropolitan area. Mm. So, <clears throat> you have people that come from out of town, and they're staying in the city at this point. So, if they need anything or they're hosting events, they're hashtagging. Like, a lot of my hashtags are Detroit at this point mm. because they're going to hashtag Detroit opposed to Michigan because a lot of things are happening inside of Detroit. So when you do a hashtag, it'll be whatever, whatever, Detroit, or you'll just hashtag Detroit? It'll say hashtag Detroit, um, Lennon Reno, hashtag Detroit event planner, hashtag mm. Detroit. It's always hashtag Detroit something, and then that's how you'll find me. Okay. Okay. Um, what is the <laughs> the craziest event that you've ever done? The most outlandish event. Um, it was probably the, the prom send-offs. Like, those, I just... Okay, well, so give me one. <clears throat> what was the one, the prom send-off that you did that you was just like, how? I'm just like, sitting here. I'm just like... The, it was the one with the, the boats and the Rolls oh. Royces and the... Wait, all this was at one prom this send-off? This was one send-off. So they had Rolls Royces, boats, boats, what else? And, um... What was the other car? Camaro. What did they even drive? Oh, so yeah, they took the they took the boat to the prom. All right, cool. So the the car had to get you to the boat. So, but you could only drive one car, right? Right. But there were three cars here. Okay. Um. Then he had, 
backdrops he had red carpets and it was just so much and and um table chair covered and i'm just like a table they had food yes it was a buffet um you, you provided food too i didn't provide food okay you don't do food no okay and it was, so and it's only know. for like a five minute thing. Like you're gonna take pictures, and you get in the car, and you pull off. Well, I think they were going, but everyone else was still partying. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. But it's just because you're going to prom, though. And I just only think, I, and I guess it's weird because all I remember is standing on the porch, taking pictures, and getting in the car and I, pulling off. I, I, what did I do? What did I do with my prom? Um, I had some people come over, like a couple fr- family members. And whatever. you stood on the porch, and, and you got we took a picture. picture then and I went to my day's house. And we did the same thing for her family. Mm-hmm. And then we left. Exactly. You didn't have all mm-hmm. this Got to the prom late. Missed, my f- missed the meal. I was a little upset about <laughs> that. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, it wasn't, no. Like, what what did the one with the boat cost? What what did that cost? Like, <laughs> like in all honesty, what did that cost? Because we didn't say no name. So what did that cost? Do it was you a remember? couple thousand. A couple thousand dollars. For, for the like, whole evening. For yeah. like five minutes. That's it. Not, and then suits and dresses, you know, red bottoms. You helped acquire all that too? No, I'm just looking oh. at I'm just looking at the cost of everything that and everything was custom made. So uh, Okay. All right. Yeah, that's that's crazy. So, um when you when you say backdrops, you help rent the backdrops or you can help people acquire backdrops also. I don't know if people I put together um backdrops. So you make them? Yes. Okay. With the curtains and all that, I oh, so like not the printed ones, like it's only oh no no, I um I have someone who does that. So like the printed ones that you may have saw on my page and stuff like that, mm-hmm. I have someone that does that. Is that um, vinyl, like reusable, or is mm-hmm. it um is it paper? Oh no, it's reusable. So okay. all the ones that I had made this year, I'm gonna reuse them for next year. So I have a place where I just roll them up and I use them again for the next event. They're not paper. Okay. Oh, so you don't make anything get anything made specific for if that's what they want i the try not to right because then they're gonna have to keep it well you right. just charge them for it I guess. right right it's theirs but for like rental i um try to get things where i can reuse yeah, it of for course, rental yeah. purposes you but rent, if it's custom it. then that's yours you take that with you yeah take a picture of it yeah take a picture you can't say happy 50th birthday juanita on it i can't use that again you can just do happy 50th birthday right okay and i can reuse that again okay all right so what <laughs> Let me ask you this: What, uh, just to be funny, what is an event that you've thrown and you were kind of like, and you felt bad for the people because like nobody really showed up, or not um, as many people I showed up? I just it was a surprise birthday party, uh, and surprise no one was there. Like no one? Yeah, like three or four people. Uh, how do you come to so who planned that? Like how do you come it to suck. it? It It really sucks. It's like. Either you don't have any friends that like you, or either everyone just has something to do. I don't know, but it I want to know who planned that for them. Because <laughs> whoever planned that was not your they friend. They didn't do good. They was not your friend. They, 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 yeah, they didn't really live it down. So it was like four people. That's but hey, crazy. Sorry, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> no money back. No money Sorry, back guarantee. I, listen, I produced what I was supposed to produce. How many people was that for? It was like supposed to be for fifty people. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, well, before we go, I'm going to hit you with a couple topics to just get your opinion on. So, off the subject, so we've, um, oh, well, plug plug your plug your business again. How can they reach you for uh, Visions Be Held? B I S I O N S B E H E L D. How many platforms? All platforms? Or were you just Instagram? Oh, Instagram, Twitter? Facebook. Okay, just Instagram, Facebook. Okay. Yeah. All right, so that's how I can reach out to you. Yes. All right, cool. All right, so that's the business. So I had a question to ask you. Um, being a native of Detroit, um, how do you feel about um, – so let me ask you this. With your, with your, your business, is that something that – like the, the prom scene, though, do you think that was something that is – a national thing, or do you think it's done majority in like metro areas? Or it's national because I have uh, family that's down south, and I travel people in different states, and I see it being done. I thought it only happened here, but I saw it done everywhere. I just think that's just crazy. 
you can like be ready to spend money now. I do. I don't have it, and I don't. I'm not gonna ever have it for that. I don't that's care how good life gets. That's crazy. My kids not getting a prom coming. <laughs> they not getting a prom coming. <laughs> not getting a prom. I know that's crazy. Um, what else I'm gonna say? Um, what are your your views nowadays on uh, the social media impact on, I guess, the city? Like, how do you think the city is displayed? In social I media? don't like it because not just social media, but media. Period. Mm-hmm. Um, the first thing I do. My morning ritual was to cut on the news. Yeah, I don't watch that. Um, and the well, news I, will definitely deter not. you from the city of Detroit. It'll deter you from leaving the house. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it definitely, uh, today on the east side of Detroit, someone broke in and mm-hmm. shot six, six, you know. But you never see anyone reporting things like this right here. Yeah. Or you never see anyone reporting, oh, today such and such had a back to school drive like you don't see any of that thing Mm -hmm. or you don't see them reporting live from the festivals or you might see them reporting or even on social media reporting someone got shot at the festival yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. Yeah. so it's not Mm -hmm. any of the good things Mm -hmm. being displayed you're not showing so when i go out of town in their mind they remember detroit being burnt down Mm -hmm. yeah right vacant buildings Mm -hmm. because Media or publicity is not displaying all of the new things. Mm-hmm. So I have to spend my whole vacation explaining yourself. explaining how Detroit is not. Oh, no, it's not like that anymore. Mm-hmm. You almost got to pull out pictures. We're not losers like the Lions. Like, <laughs> we, it's, it's not like that. Dang, you know, just get the Lions <laughs> like that. It's Dang. not like that. Any, but I'm a huge Lions fan, like die hard. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> it's not like that anymore. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I have to spend a lot of time explaining Pulling up pictures. Wait, but wait, no, yeah, let yeah. me let me show you. Like, look at this. This is Detroit. <laughs> right. Like, so that's a lot of time that I spend doing that. Yeah, I, I can understand that, uh, and that and that's pretty much what um, this podcast is. Uh, the show is going to be about. It's just the reason I entitled it the Culture Cures is, and and more so just basically within our city is we're just always displayed as the forgotten city uh, per se. It's like ah oh, yeah. I, me- I remember going out of town and people would be like, oh, you from Detroit? Bro, dang, man. Like, and you were Kwame stole like, everything. Like, like, wow, like, you don't get shot at every day? No. No, I don't. I don't. I, I don't walk around with a bulletproof vest. No, oh. I, don't, I, don't, well, I don't get shot at nothing. No. <laughs> like, for real, like, I'm surprised you made it out. Like, made it out like it's jail or something. Exactly. Like, no, I didn't made it out. And yeah. they would be scared to say stuff to you like, oh, man, don't say it to him because he from Detroit. Like. That her murder mission. Exactly. Like, it's not it's that not bad. That like, bad. It's, like you have to come because it's like I love what they're doing there's downtown. There's places that are so much worse than Detroit. I'm telling you. So I yeah, know. yeah, yeah. I've been there. Exactly. Yeah. I, I I went to L. A. and it wasn't wasn't too uh, exactly. But they too point this, paint this beautiful picture of L. A. Yeah. Like you see sunny skies and mm-hmm. all that stuff. But Hollywood. No, not every that. place has a ghetto. Like. No matter where you go, you're going to be pointed to the ghetto. Go to Nashville, Tennessee. You're going to be pointed to the ghetto. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you go. There's killing and violence everywhere. You know? So yeah. just yeah. give us another chance. That's what I be telling. Like, yeah. Well, that's what we're going to do. That's the whole purpose of this show. Um, it will be streamed on uh, our YouTube channel, uh, The Culture Cure. And this little podcast will be uploaded soon to all podcast streaming. And we g- that's what we're going to do. That's that's our focus. Cool. We're going to bring you back for some more um Detroit talk and some other conversations. I would love to be back. I appreciate you coming out. So, uh, anything else that you, any last no. words that you want? Absolutely not. Yeah. It was definitely a pleasure. I do. Okay. So, once again, this is Jay Legs and this is the Culture Cure. We appreciate your time and we'll see you next week. Bye.